Right, for this experiment, I've put 100 cc's of petrol in this beaker, and I'm going to put 100 cc's of water in the other one, so that that is a fair test. Now, for safety reasons, I'll put them in the fume cupboard so that we can see what happens a little bit later. Well, here we are, three hours later. Some of the water has disappeared, as you can see, and there appears to be no petrol left in that beaker at all. Where do you think the water and the petrol have disappeared to? And why do you think that happened? I've got some petrol in this beaker. I'm going to put a few drops of water underneath it. Right, I'm now going to put this in the fume cupboard so that I can blow air through it. The pump's rather noisy, uh, but um, it'll only stop me speaking for a little while. see that the beaker is stuck to the piece of wood actually it's frozen to it and you can see the frost that's formed on the outside of the beaker as well I'm not sure that I can get that off at all yet we'll have to wait until it warms up anyway it's quite impressive isn't it Right, for this experiment, we're going to look very carefully at some water being heated until it boils. Now, I want you to look very carefully, and I'd like you to try and explain why things are happening so that you can discuss it afterwards. Uh, and now, look carefully at the bubbles, if you can see any. Now you probably just saw the mist on the outside of the beaker.
Right, for this experiment, we've got cold water in the flask, and I'm going to arrange to suck the air out through this tube. I want you to look at it very carefully, and like last time, look for bubbles. There is a simpler way to show the same kind of effect as, as the last demonstration. What I have here is some water in a beaker. It's on the hot side, it's not scorching. I can put my finger in with no ill effects, not a problem. And I'm going to take some water in the syringe, just a small amount. That's probably more than I need. All right, that should be about the right amount. I'm going to use a piece of blue tack to, make, to, to block the end of the syringe and to make it airtight, to make sure that nothing, no air can get in and equally no water can get out. So that goes on the end of the syringe fairly firmly. If you then look closely at what happens inside the syringe as I pull the plunger out, and you can see the water bubbling quite vigorously. So I let the plunger go back again, the water goes back to how it was, pull the plunger out, and the water bubbles vigorously. And you may be able to notice what looks very much like steam or condensation on the inside of the syringe. What we're going to look at in this demonstration is an effect that you'll be familiar with from home. I'm sure you've all seen what happens when you open cans of drink or pop or beer or whatever at home. Uh, what I've got here is two cans that I took out of the fridge about an hour ago. They're both the same type, both Pepsi-Cola, um, same kind of can, same kind of drink. And what I intend to do with this one is to just open the top and watch what happens. With this one, I intend to shake it fairly vigorously and then again open the top and see what happens. Watching? This is the one that hasn't been shaken. I'll just move that to one side. The can that hasn't been shaken. Put that to one side. So this is the one which I shook before. I'll give it another shake just to, just to be certain. Down on the bench and again, watch carefully. And isn't that interesting? 